Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Club X Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Club X Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Club X on Mapes Road, Mile. Shopping for that special person just got easier when you shop at Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of the Rose City City Limits. You'll find gifts for everyone on your list from 1 to 100. Shop online or in person at Rose City Drug, Rose City. You'll find delicious food and fun at Timber Steakhouse, East County Line Road, South Branch, Michigan. You'll find delicious steaks, pizza, and a full menu with the best food in the north. Enjoy the fine food and karaoke fun at Timber Steakhouse, County Line Road, South Branch. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Hi, I'm Pat Anderson, CEO of Cooperative Elevator Company in Pigeon, Michigan, representing 963 farmer members. And we watch Michigan Magazine on RFD TV. Thanks, Pat, and thanks to all the Michigan farm families for providing and feeding the world with Michigan grains. We salute you and we'll be featuring the efforts and history of one of the state's largest cooperatives, the Cooperative Elevator Company of Pigeon, on a future edition of Michigan Magazine. We'll also learn more about the growing bean industry here in the state, an industry that's keeping family farms alive. We're going to take a closer look at the packing and shipping operation in Pigeon that sends our quality beans around the world. Meanwhile, on today's edition of Michigan Magazine, we bring you highlights of this past year's Bigfoot Bash 2012 at the Michigan Magazine Museum. This July event has become much more than just another family event. The participants being drawn are more and more on the serious side. The Bash is becoming more of a research sharing conference, drawing very serious research and investigative participants from around the world. The general public is still, of course, welcome to come and participate or just witness the conference and discussions. But brace yourself for what you'll hear, learn, and discover at this rapidly growing get-together of Bigfoot believers and skeptics. Then we welcome former outfielder for the 1954 Grand Rapids Chicks, Rosemary Stevenson. Rosemary took part in a Red Hat Fun Day at the museum where she shared her story about life as a member of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League in a book she's written called Don't Die on Third. Also, at the close of today's program, we'll be quickly highlighting some of the many brand new journeys we've taken on the road that we'll be sharing with you in coming weeks. So stay tuned. It's all coming up on this edition of Michigan Magazine. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Michigan Magazine Museum is dedicated to the travels of our television show and the state of Michigan's uniqueness. Quietly, it sits along M33 in Oscoda County, between the villages of Cummins in the north and Fairview to the south. Since its opening in July of 1998, we've welcomed literally tens of thousands of viewers and fans of our show onto the grounds and into the museum, a log lodge constructed by local workers from timber harvested near the museum. The museum has evolved slowly over the years to not only spotlight the diverse and enterprising artists, craftsmen, and businessmen that call Michigan home, but more recently has placed the spotlight vigorously on our history and wildlife, both past and present. The Michigan that has inspired the Michiganders and at times caused them to stop and ponder the origins of our state, whether it be our state's mysteries or its legends born from a melting together of legend and fact, we're beginning to spotlight those subjects a little more within the walls of the Michigan Magazine Museum. A case in point is this display just within the door of our museum. It's one of the most unique you'll find in the state of Michigan. It's drawn visitors from as far away as Russia, China, and Japan. The display features the finding and alleged evidence of the existence of Bigfoot, or Sasquatch, 
not only around the world, but here in Michigan, and not only in Michigan in general, but literally out our own back door. Little did we know at the museum that when we held our first Bigfoot bash in 2010, what we would be stirring up. We had plans of a fun tongue-in-cheek weekend with calling contests, stick-stacking events, Bigfoot look-alike contests, rock-tossing, and the like. But what ensued was eyewitness and accounts of actual sightings and discussions of Bigfoot-like creatures encountered, not just one or two here and there, but dozens of witnesses came out of the closet, so to say, after discovering there were others who were seeing something out there. What we thought to be stories of overactive imagination drew Sasquatch enthusiasts with very strong beliefs that what we were questioning or making light of was more fact than legend or lore. Now, within the past few years, the museum has become the central location of conferences dedicated to sharing research and documentation of evidence found by some pretty respectable investigators on the subject. Here on the table you'll find unexplained footprints, photos of stackings, and other forest anomalies that stretches one's imagination as to their origins. Before when I started to study this problem, it was 46 years ago, we th thought that this uh, creature is just animal and we were hunting on it, uh, for, for, uh, trying to make some special uh, bullets uh, to tranquilize them like, uh, like so and after uh, to study but step by step uh, uh, we uh, start to understand that this is very very close to humans and even uh, uh, in last time we think that it is human just uh, uh, in other species of uh, uh, that than me, we, and this uh, problem is not only scientific problem but also social social problem because just the neighborly of us uh, in forest in, in especially in this uh, region for example very close to uh, people to humans uh, houses live uh, in other people, in other uh, humans, uh, they, but they are of, uh, they don't uh, use uh, clothes, they don't use fire, they don't use tools, they don't use any, uh, what uh, we, what we use, uh, uh, humans. And anyway, they live, they survive, they continue their <laughs> existence, uh, and even uh, they uh, somehow um, they uh, keep uh, the order in the forest. And, uh, and now it is much necessary. We we are worried about our environment, but also it's necessary to worry about their environment because their environment is our environment. And that is why uh, it. Uh, I say this is uh, this problem became. Uh, um, a social problem, not only scientific problem, that to, to, to find, to discover new species. As Dr. Borsaf went on to explain, the controversy continues as to what is being seen out there, not at all if it actually exists. That's a fact that serious Bigfoot researchers have concluded. And so our Bigfoot Bash has become more than just a fun outing for the family, with the participants who made it to our third annual event creating a more research-based believers conference out of it. With skeptics, with serious debatable points, welcome of course. All ages took part in 2012. This year's event included for the first time a follow the trail exhibit created by area researcher Jim Sherwood. Led by Jim, participants were taken down a cordoned off trail that had along its length examples of what we look for and what can be expected when Bigfoot is suspected in the area. This along with researchers' presentations and sharing presentations proved to be a real popular part of the event. As did our annual search and rescue demonstration provided by Jerry Dalt and search and rescue partner Coda, who did not disappoint as again our resident Bigfoot reenactor was found in record time. 2012's event was unique in not only allowing visitors a more in-depth look at actual physical evidence, but also that upon conclusion of this year's open conference, those wishing to discuss the possibilities more in depth immediately planned to reconvene at the museum a few weeks later, which was also well attended.
And so it goes at the Michigan Magazine Museum. Events start out as one thing, but through necessity evolve into something else. From fun and games and tongue-in-cheek to a serious look at the possibilities of Bigfoot or Sasquatch. In Michigan, of all places. If the subject catches your interest, stay tuned to Michigan Magazine for more details on next year's event or stop by and register for Twitter or Facebook updates from our website at michiganmagazine.com. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by The Art of Amalia Jonas is at the art store near Lupton, Michigan. Stop by her gallery or visit her online to purchase that perfect masterpiece or sign up for private lessons. Begin your journey in the world of art by capturing the inspiration around you under the personal direction of Amalia Jonas at the art store. Hale Hardware, your do-it center in Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Greenbrier Golf Course, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. You'll love this beautiful, professionally designed 18-hole course with a bulky golfer in mind. From pro to beginner, Greenbrier will have you returning for more. Enjoy the watered fairways, driving range, full-service restaurant, bar with Wi-Fi, and gift shop. Greenbrier, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. Rose Valley Winery, committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold-hearty grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road, Rose City. Well, on this edition of Michigan Magazine, we're at the Michigan Magazine Museum on the back porch, and we have a celebrity here with us. We have Rosemary Stevenson. Rosemary, it's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. And you just got done with the book signing here at the museum. We have Red Hatters galore here. It's a Red Hat Fun Day. But what we have is an extremely rare opportunity to uh, talk to a lady who has kind of lived a bit of history, I guess, a walking piece of history, I guess, from back in the 1950s, I guess. You were actually playing baseball, weren't you? in a league of their own, more or less, uh, which a movie was made and, uh, to kind of go in that vein, wasn't it? Yes, I, I was able to play the last league, the, or the last year the league was in existence, 1954. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the league folded in December of 1954. Mm -hmm. uh, I started playing ball when I was 11. Oh my. I played um, Sandlot softball. Uh, around the Sault Ste. Marie, Detour, Cedarville, Red Yard area. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I was 17, I came to Grand Rapids and to Battle Creek, actually, is where the tryouts were. And there was 106 of us girls that tried out for a team mm -hmm. spot. Okay. Six of us made it. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, um, I feel very privileged and honored to have that one year to play professional baseball. Now, the movie that, that you saw, uh, we saw Tom Hanks, Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna playing it. Was that pretty true to the way it was back then? Or did they take a, a little liberty here and there, but basically was it a camaraderie like that amongst the ladies? The movie was very good, pretty close to true to form. We had a league representative, which was a former ball player, mm -hmm. and uh, she was right there alongside of Penny Marshall, uh, actually our right-hand man, um, representing the league, so nothing got too Hollywood in the movie. Mm -hmm. And so it was pretty much true to form. They, they did a good job. Now, the, the book that you wrote, Don't Die on Third, what is it all about? Is it more or less uh, you're reminiscing about it or some of the highlights of that career? What made you write Don't Die on Third? The story behind Don't Die on Third was uh, started with my mother, she, uh, Anna Stevenson. She said, uh, you know, you've done so much playing ball, coaching, um, different things with sports that we don't even know what you've done. Mm -hmm. So you ought to write a book. Um, I had then gone to college at Aquinas after I retired from Michigan Bell, and one of my professors said the same thing. She said, you know, you have so much history and so many things that you have done in your life that you ought to put a book out there mm -hmm. so people know what you have done. So that's how the book really started. Mm -hmm. And the book is about my 52 years of playing softball in coaching, mm -hmm. which started in the Upper Peninsula, uh, playing in the Canadian League, uh, across the river from the Sioux 
and then coming down state and playing one year professional baseball for the Grand Rapids Chicks. After the Chicks and the league folded, then I went back to playing softball and coaching again. And so all told, I had 52 years of coaching and playing ball. Mm -hmm. And I also coached um, two years of Eagle Scout baseball. Okay. Okay. Uh, two years of girls softball at Muskegon Catholic Central. Uh, so, and um, I also was really fortunate that I was able to spend a week in Lakeland, Florida, playing baseball at the Detroit Tiger Fantasy Camp. So I had Dave Rosema and Jason Thompson as my coaches. Oh my. Do you ever get that out of your blood? Do you still have, play any games or play any ball or do you just kind of watch now or do you have the, the desire to get out there on the field every once in a while throw a ball or two? I still have the desire. Um, I quit playing ball six years ago mm -hmm. because of an injury. I pulled a hamstring in a celebrity mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. and it has never healed right so therefore um, I can't play ball. But now that I'm watching uh, nieces and nephews play ball, I still get the urge of, oh, I'd like to go back and coach. Um, I don't think you ever lose it, mm -hmm. especially when if you've played that many years and it's just, it's in the blood. <laughs> I'm still in awe of having that opportunity to play ball mm -hmm. and to play especially professional baseball. I think that's the biggest moment of my life is mm -hmm. to be able to have that opportunity because many girls didn't have that mm -hmm. and to this day they don't have it. Um, and also that I guess my parents allowed me to do that, to mm -hmm. play in all these sports. Uh, back when I was in high school we never had sports for girls like they do now so it um, it was a big move. We were making history and didn't know it. Yeah. And also, we were doing something we loved and got paid for it. There you go. There you go. And uh, you, you did the, the, the book with uh, W.C. Madden, is it? Now, how did they play into the picture? Bill Madden, uh, I met him at some of our reunions. The league have reunions every year at different locations around the Midwest. Uh, so, therefore, that's how I met Bill. He has written some books about the women's baseball. And when I called him and said, you know, Bill, I need some advice. I want to write a book, but I have no idea where to start. Um, I said, it's all in my head, but it doesn't transfer to paper. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'll help you. He said, you put it all on paper, everything you can think of, and I'll prove it. Mm -hmm. So that's how Bill helped me. That's okay. And I see that uh, your grandmother kept you in line as far as getting you to church on time, right? I mean, she put things into priority. Yes, thank you for my grandmother on my mother's side of the family. Uh, if my parents didn't get to go to uh, church, to Mass, then Grandma would stop with my uncle, Victor, and they would pick me up and make sure I got to church. It's been a pleasure, Rosemary, to have you here at the museum, and uh, your book is available. Where is it available? True, through you. True. Thank you very much for being part of Michigan Magazine and thanks for keeping history alive and, and doing what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much for joining us as we hit the back roads of this Great Lake State. We've been on the road constantly, day in and day out, ready to bring you brand new programs for the remainder of 2012 and 2013. Michigan is an amazing and diverse state. Coming up, we'll be heading to world-famous Cabela Sports World in Dundee to learn more about their Michigan expansion plans. That's right, the sporting headquarters favorite plans two new stores to open in Michigan in 2013. One in Granville and one in Saginaw. We plan and bringing you all the latest news and updates on the project. Also, for you bow hunting fans, you are well aware of the quality and heritage of Darton Archery, headquartered in Hale, Michigan. We'll visit the plant and watch one of their high-performance bows being put together by hand and learn more about this Michigan company's amazing heritage. How many of you have ever dreamed of being energy self-sufficient to be completely off the grid? Is it possible to generate all your own energy and still maintain the lifestyle you've become accustomed to? Well, yes it is. According to this husband and wife team who've done just that, they produce all their own needed energy from a windmill and solar panels, then turn their beautiful log home into a bed and breakfast. It's Log Haven in Ogemaw County, and we are going to hear the story of how it is possible now to be energy self-sufficient. We're also going to bring you highlights of visits with David Avon 
Jacqueline Ryan, who's going to give us a tour of an amazing exhibit at the Ogemaw County Fair, an antique barn filled with the tools of farmers of yesterday. You'll see how amazingly innovative our ancestors were in bringing the country's bounty to the world. Then we visit with Native American musician Silver Fox Lopez, who sits with us to explain the vision he has in planning for one of the state's largest powwows. Where? Well, it's going to be at the Michigan Magazine Museum, September 2013. It's exciting, so watch for that show coming soon. We are all dreamers at heart, aren't we? Coming up, we're going to see how far a dream can take you when you and your wife dream of the Old West and how nice it would be to have an Old West town to stroll through every now and then. Our journeys take us down south near Hillsdale, Michigan, where we found an old west town constructed in a backyard, dedicated solely to family reunions and neighborly get-togethers. From a dance hall and jail to a church and bunkhouse, it's all here at a place called Lost Nation. And that's just a few examples of dozens of new adventures coming up, so make it a point to join us here each week as we continue our journeys off the beaten path on Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City. Freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. 33 Motorsports Park, family racing fun for all ages and skill levels. Three tracks located on M33 in Oscoda County. Come watch or join in the action all year long. Developed for motorcycles, quads, UTVs, and snowmobiles. 33 Motorsports Park. TriPoint Connections, a church connecting to God, people, and community. TriPoint Connections invites you to rediscover church in a relaxed, refreshing atmosphere. Join us Saturdays for fellowship and worship.